Welcome to module. Welcome to module one of outdoor soccer official training. Uh, we'll be going over the uniform, some basic rules um, of the sport to get you all started. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about is uniform. So officials wear yellow stripes. Um, the yellow stripes will be checked out from the recreational field complex field house. Um, so when you show up to your shift, all of the uniforms will be there for you. Um, you go to the back, find your size, check one out, um, and that will be yours for the shift. You'll put it into the dirty laundry at the end of the night. It will be washed, and then it will be nice and fresh for your next shift as well. Um, the big note with the official uniform is that we need the stripes to be tucked into your shorts or athletic pants at all times. Um, especially all times you're fishing. If before and after games you want to untuck um, to be a little more relaxed, that's fine. But while we're fishing, please tuck them in. With that being said, our pants and shorts should be athletic and black. Um, and then cleats are strongly encouraged, not 100% required. If you have a pair of jogging shoes that you want to wear, um, something athletic that you can move around in, that is cool too. Um, but yeah, so all you all need to bring is black athletic shorts and or pants and then some nice neutral colored cleats or shoes. And then we'll provide everything else. We'll give you a whistle, stripes, red and yellow cards, all of that. For some competitive sports rules, um, the supervisors will handle most of this, but it's good for you all to know. All UNCW students will need to bring their one card, their student ID, in order to check in and play. Um, they will check in at the window with the supervisors, um, but in order to get into the field at all, they're going to need their ID. Some illegal equipment that they are not allowed to wear are hard brimmed hats or like dangling jewelry. Um, if it's a like a beanie hat, that's OK. But if it's anything with a brim or if the beanie hat has one of those balls on top, um, they're not allowed to wear those. They do have to be wearing closed toed shoes. They don't necessarily have to be wearing cleats, um, but they do need to be not in flip flops or sandals or something like that. Um, they need to be in athletic attire as well, so they can't be wearing jeans or khaki shorts or something like that. Um, and all of our games are played out at the recreational field complex. These are what our scorecards look like. Um, you as officials will keep score throughout the game. One of the officials will have this on them at all times. Um, the top stuff, date, time, field, as well as the team name, all of that will be filled out ahead of time. And then you all just need to fill out the score for each half, the final score, and then that SR portion down there stands for sportsmanship rating. Um, it is on a one to five scale, and you all will submit a sportsmanship rating for teams as well. For yellow and red cards, any unsportsmanlike conduct cards, um, we will write down the number of the player who received it, as well as just a small note as to what it was that they got the card for, whether that be slide tackling, cussing an official, something like that. And then at the bottom, at the end of the game, each official will go and sign the scorecard and then give it back to the supervisor. Our soccer is played 9v9, um, and that includes the goalies on the field as well. So eight players in the field and one goalie, um, and teams may begin playing with as few as five players. For the coin toss, um, the visiting team, which will it'll just be marked as a way on the scorecard, they will call the toss. Um, we don't actually flip a coin. What we will have you do is put either a one or two behind your back. You will stand between the two captains, um, and then you will ask the away captain, am I holding a one or a two? If they guess correctly, they have won the coin toss. If they guess incorrectly, then the other team wins a coin toss. And then they get to choose whether they would like to kick off um, or receive. Or they can choose to defend which side of the field they would like. So you would give them those options. Would you like to kick off or receive? Or would you like to pick which goal you will defend? Our game is played two 20-minute halves with a five-minute halftime. Um, it is a running clock throughout the entire time. Um, once we hit that 20 minute mark, your timer will go off and it will beep. Um, unless somebody is like very immediately in a scoring opportunity, we will just blow it dead at any point. So even if it looks like an attack is building and they're on their half of the field, unless they are like in or immediately around the penalty area, um, then we are going to blow that dead at that point. Four ties in the regular season, we'll just call it a draw. Each team will receive a draw on their record. And then in the playoffs, we will do a overtime three minute golden goal um, overtime. If we're still tied at the end of that three minute golden goal, then we will turn immediately to a shootout. It will be a five person shootout. Um, and then if at the end of the five person shootout, you're still tied, then it becomes a sudden death shootout where we just have one from each member going back and forth until either one misses and the other makes um, or making a miss. 
or mercy rule. This will be listed on your scorecard as well. Uh, 15 or more goals with five minutes or less remaining, we can blow it dead. Um, 10 or more goals with two minutes or less remaining, we can also blow it dead and call the game at that point. Um, and you can just let everybody know that the mercy rule has been hit. There is an unlimited amount of substitutions for our league, so they can sub as many times as they want. They can do it between periods. They can do it when the ball has been kicked out of play, after a goal is scored, if an injury has happened, or uh, when a player is disqualified. Now, if somebody gets injured and they get injured to a point where we are stopping our clock because they are essentially wasting time, that player must come off of the field um, once we restart play. So they have to be replaced. If they do not have a substitute, then that player must leave the field and then they must wait if they wish to come back on, they must wait until another dead ball happens to do so. For kickoffs, they can technically kick the ball in any direction. Um, we do force them, so the defense must be on their side of the field and the offense must be on their side of the field. Um, and then the only exception is whoever is first kicking the ball, if they take a step over half so they can kick it back towards their own team, that's fine. Uh, we do require our trail official to blow their whistle before every kickoff happens. If they go and they kick off before you have blown your ready for play whistle, please, please re-blow your whistle, make them get back into formation and wait for you. Um, we want to control the game at our pace and not let the players dictate what is happening. So there's a couple examples you got to watch there. Um, they're both kind of OK. Um, we can sort of let those type of things go. Um, but the more we do, I think the more they're going to take advantage of it. So when they're doing a kickoff, just make sure everybody holds on their sides before the ball is kicked. They're allowed to get up close and, and, and want to push to the other side, um, but don't allow them to cross that line consistently before the ball is kicked. All right, some unique rules for our league as well. We do not have an offsides rule, so it's sort of like futsal or indoor soccer. Um, we do not have any offsides, so you all do not need to worry about that whatsoever, which uh, makes your job a little bit easier. Okay, um, and then for inbounds, out of bounds, if you're not a soccer player, this can sort of be a confusing one. Um, but in order for a ball to be considered out of bounds or for a ball to be considered a goal, it must completely cross over that line. If it is still in touch with the touch line or the goal line at all, um, then it is still technically in the field of play. Um, this, so the yellow ball in this graphic here is the only one that is technically out of play. Similarly, if that out of play was actually like the goal portion, the yellow ball would be the only one that actually scored a goal. That middle ball is on the touch line. It's not fully on one side or the other. So it's not out of play, still technically in the field of play. And then obviously the top one at the white still almost fully in the field of play. We are not blowing the ball dead if a ball touches the touch line. It has to go completely over or completely into the goal. That was a perfect example there and uh, well officiated by the official there as well. You could see that he was ready to blow his whistle, um, but he was able to see that the ball maintained contact with that white line and then was pushed back into play. Um, so he held his whistle, which was very well done um, and allowed them to play on. OK, for goalkeeper restrictions, um, they can only control a ball with their hands and their own penalty area. So if they go outside of the penalty area and pick it up, um, then it will be an indirect kick, which we'll get to in, in a little while. Um, but they can only use their hands in their own penalty area. They have a full 10 seconds to get rid of the ball, um, whether that's drop kicking, punting, throwing, or placing the ball at their feet. Um, and then similarly with controlling the ball outside of the penalty area, they cannot handle a throw in from their own team or if their teammates play the ball back to them off of their feet. Um, now, if their teammate 
heads the ball back to them or bounces it off their chest or something like that, the goalie can then use their hands. But simply a team cannot kick the ball and pass it back to their goalie and just have them pick it up. Um, if they do, it will be an indirect kick at the point where the goalie picks it up. Now, this can create some weird situations, right? Because the goalie could be in their six own six-yard box and then pick up the ball that was passed back to their team. And then wherever they picked up that ball, it's going to be an indirect kick from that point. Um, it doesn't happen a ton, but it does create some weird scenarios when it does. Goalkeepers are allowed to dive for the ball, but they are not allowed to take players out. So they can't come out if somebody's rushing at them on attack and they can't slide and take out their feet. They also can't dive head first um, or like slide on the side of their body and take players out. Now, diving for a ball in the goal is is different. They're allowed to do that, right? But similarly, how we do not want slide tackling, which we'll get to, um, our goalkeepers are not allowed to dive and take players out at their feet either. Um, it will be a yellow or a red card depending on the severity of it, um, and it's probably going to be in the penalty area and will result in a penalty kick. There we go. Good example there. Um, goalie picked up the ball outside of his penalty area. Um, our official did a good job blowing the whistle, and it will be an indirect kick from that point where he picked it up. All right, moving along, some more soccer rules, throw-ins. Players must use both hands equally, come over the top of their head, and have both feet on the ground at the time of the throw-in. We'll have some videos to show you what this looks like, um, but essentially they need to bring the ball all the way behind their head, um, or at least over the top of it. Both feet must remain in contact and then they must follow all the way through. If the ball does not go inbounds, then the throw will be replayed. So if they take it and they try to throw it down the touch line and it goes out of bounds again without anybody touching it, they will re-throw from the original point where they had the throw in. If they do this twice in a row, then it now is a turnover, and the other team will then take possession of the ball again at that initial point where they tried to throw it in. Corner kicks are taken from a quarter circle in the corner. Um, if the defense is trying to press up close on the corner and the offense asks, they must be at least 10 yards back at the time of the kick. Goal kicks must be taken behind or in the six yard box. Um, if the ball does not clear the penalty area, it will be re-kicked. So that means that our goalies need to not just tap the ball to a teammate right in front of them, they must kick it completely outside of the penalty area. Um, they can kick it long, they can kick it short, but it must leave the penalty area or you will blow and have them re-kick it. Yep, so what we're showing there is um, that gentleman threw it down the touch line. It landed out of bounds. Um, so what they theoretically should do is give him the ball back and have him rethrow from that point. And that was just a couple more illegal throws there. The first gentleman, it was sort of like a jump throw, but it looked like both of his feet were off the ground when he released the ball. That is an immediate turnover. The other team can take over from there. And then the last one, uh, the gentleman just had the ball right in front of his head and kind of just put it out there. Um, again, he needs to come up over his head and follow through with it in order for it to be an illegal throw. So both of those, blow him dead, turn the ball over, and allow the other team to throw in. I think also you can see our rep there doing some preventative officiating. Um, she is showing him and telling him why the throwing was illegal and what he needs to do next time. As an official, please do that. Um, you'll get some people out here that may do something incorrectly and not know exactly why. Feel free to correct them um, just very quickly and so that they can you know, do it right the next time and continue to have fun. All right, our next module will be about direct and indirect kicks. We will touch on them now and then go more in depth in the next module. 
Direct kicks are free kicks, which do not have to be touched by another player before going into the goal. So these are the highlights you see in soccer where they have a set piece. Um, they put the ball down, they kick it. Nobody touches it, not even the goalie. Go straight into the net. Um, it's some of, some of the coolest highlights, I think, in soccer. Um, that is a direct kick. Now, the defensive team must be at least 10 yards from the ball when they do this direct kick. This doesn't always happen because sometimes teams will play fast, um, which is okay. If, if the offense decides to go put the ball down on a direct kick and just play on right away, we are cool with that. Um, but they do not get the benefit of having defenders be 10 yards away from the ball. If they want to guarantee that the defenders are 10 yards away, they have to ask you to then move them back. At that point, we'll go to where the spot kick is. We will walk 10 yards out. We will point to the ground um, and tell them, this is the line that you all need to stay behind. Please do not cross it um, before the ball is kicked. If they do cross it before the ball is kicked, um, you can see kind of how intentional it was. If they're just blatantly walking over it, once you, once you turn around to walk back to the sideline, feel free to give them a card right away. Um, if it was sort of incidental or it wasn't much, uh, maybe give them a warning. But if you are telling participants to do something very directly and they are choosing to blatantly not follow your orders that's a very easy way to give cards out i would say make it probably a yellow at least the first time um, and if they're repeat offenders go ahead and give them a red card for indirect kicks the biggest difference um, obviously is one how we get there which we'll cover in the next module um, direct versus indirect but the biggest difference is that indirect kicks must be touched by another player before entering the goal it can be either team. So if it's looking like a shot on net and the goalie tries to save it and they just get a touch on it and it goes in, probably a bad move by the goalie because if it wasn't touched, um, then the goal would not count. But because the goalie got a finger on it, um, it's going to count. So a lot of times you'll see teams, they'll just like tap the ball a little bit and then they'll have somebody come and kick it. Um, so it just has to be touched by more than one person before entering the goal. And the same rule applies for the 10-yard marker there. Okay, thank you all for tuning in. This is probably the longest module of the group. Uh, so go ahead and go to the next one and then take the quiz and jump to the next module. Thank you.